Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? There is a moment in which you have to understand that it's actually not your fault and remove the blame that you give yourself because without doing so, you carry that burden with you. And I think that is often the boundary between stepping into something that can be powerful in a healing journey and being mm -hmm. stuck in that place where you feel like the world is against you. And that's such a battle. How do you begin to transform your own understanding of fault and blame and responsibility when you have been hurt in childhood? I think so. We hear this often, what you're saying, we need to not carry it with us anymore. And what you often hear is the society, social media, which is very concerning, is telling us to heal because everyone wants to heal. It's the whole trend and also a healthy trend, of course, to a degree. You need to forgive as well. And that will with that we bypass healing that is very concerning because when we forgive too soon without the acknowledgement of what was done to us first of all you cannot really forgive because to to forgive we need to have self-compassion self-compassion we can only have when we acknowledge it's not necessarily our parents who has to acknowledge it as long as we or i don't know with the therapist acknowledges what happened to you only then we can have self-compassion and then we can forgive but we need to go to those situations that, that the childhood, and that is complicated. That's why I also created the Heal Your Inner Child online course for people to understand. I give specific examples of what can go wrong. And you're mentioning now a couple of things, if you were sexually abused or you were beaten, et cetera. So these at least, I'm not saying that it makes it more easy, but at least were visible things that happened as a child, at least. But I have a lot of clients, high functioning, with the amazing parents who are still together. And they haven't had a connection in their whole life. They're living in prison because they were manipulated by narcissistic dynamics, et cetera, for instance. And that is much more complex. So people, it would be amazing if with social media, we could go more specifically to childhood situations and people could start identifying situations. For instance, I have a client, I used to have a client, and he, he said, my childhood was great, everything was great. And then when we go deeper, it turns out that the parent was very selfish. And so now he doesn't trust people. We need to acknowledge all these things because often, for instance, another example, Mike, I'm not sure if you've heard it, heard this one. I hear this often with people around me. My mother is just difficult. She's, she means she's just anxious. She's being anxious. Okay. She was just overprotective. I don't agree with that. She might've been anxious, but apparently she's selfish to not take her problems to a psychologist and to burden you with worrying about her. And you should be a child. You should be worrying about your, yourself. You should not be worrying it about your parents. And that is traumatic. If you need to comfort your parents, that is not okay. It's robbing your childhood, et cetera. It has a lot of implications, but people are not aware of that. This is just an example. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. And a lot of that can be covert. You just don't see it, but it doesn't yes. mean it's not there. Yes. People are starting to recognize this and more and more so because now we're having conversations with words like narcissism, words we mm -hmm. haven't used before. Mm -hmm. And looking at that and stepping into it, now understanding we, in order to continue to step into this path of healing, need to create boundaries and understanding around our wants, needs, interests, and values, so on and so forth. What I'm curious about from your perspective is what role does having boundaries in your life play in the healing journey? So yeah, I came up with this, this healing steps. So you have step one of acknowledging I'm wounded in the first place because a lot of people are in denial. I'm wounded. I'm actually surviving, not thriving. And the other one is connecting to your emotions. The other one is creating your emotional home, your safe haven. The fourth one is the healing the wound, acknowledging what was done to us to be able to get the self-compassion and create self-worth. Fifth one is the relationships you need to repair. So the emotional home is about we need you are that you're living in a house with a roof over your head, assuming most people do. There is a reason you want protection. You want someone to be to retreat to, to be able to restore your energy, to reflect, to, to be safe, literally. A lot of people with trauma don't have an emotional home. We forget that we need one. An emotional home is your own safe haven. The, that's the space, you, the place you go to, an emotional place in this case, where you feel safe. 
but with especially with trauma when you have this inner critic because you yet not have acknowledged what was done to you so all the blame goes towards ourself we're beating ourselves up as inner critic and the shame that can be killing a lot of people out there with who experience shame know how hectic that emotion is and we need to heal i think it was a beautiful sentence in pete walker's book as well from surviving to thriving we need to take our own side and that's that so we need to protect our we need to have our home and your question was about boundary the door in a home is a boundary right if there's bad people i assume you close the door you're not opening the door is that correct yeah of course but a lot of people if they have a home they don't have doors and they everything comes in and it's unsafe and that is boundaries we need to have a home and we need to have doors and to close them 